Patchwork is a form of needlework that goes back hundreds of years. In it, leftover pieces of rags and fabric are sewn together to create clothing and quilts. Today, turned into a hobby, you can find completely specialized shops with tons and tons of fabric, string, and yarn amongst to choose from. It is there that workshops take place, thanks to which this beautiful art is maintained throughout time. Patchwork is indeed a task that requires patience and hard work, since an art piece can take several hundred hours. So imagine you just had your firstborn grandson and want to embroider a beautiful quilt for your precious munchkin. Unfortunately, your son's mother-in-law wants to beat you to it. You both have 53 hours to spend in the best way possible, working day after day. You'll buy new patches and sew them onto your quilt board. They come in different prices, sizes, and shapes. And because of this, sewing them can take from a short while to a whole day. Get your glasses, thimble up, and thread that needle. This just got serious. Hi, welcome on board. Today I'm going to show you Patchwork, a fantastic abstract two-player game where you're going to make a quilt, a patchwork quilt, using these Tetris-shaped patches. Although it isn't a complicated game, we've made two tutorials for you. A detailed tutorial for the owner of the game or for whoever explains it, and an express one, this one. Shorter and straight to the point for players learning how to play for the first time. Here we'll explain the basic rules, skip the setup, and all the unnecessary details an experienced player can clarify when need be. The thematic intro is exactly the same, so you can skip it by clicking on the time labels in the video description. In the video description, you'll find the links to the tutorials, the review, gameplays, hacks, and subscription. Which, by the way, if you've already subscribed, don't forget to click the bell. That way, you won't miss any of our future videos. Let's see how it's played. The game objective is to finish the game with more buttons than your opponent. Buttons that you'll earn and spend throughout the game. But be careful, because at the end of the game, you'll lose two buttons for each empty space left on your quilt board. For this reason, although your objective is to get buttons, try to fill the quilt up as much as possible. You'll start the game with everything set up like this, and a quilt board to fill up with patches. During your turn you can do one of these two actions, buying and stitching a patch, or resting. The player that last used the needle goes first. You can buy one and only one of the three patches placed after the wooden pawn in a clockwise sense. Each patch has a label on it with two symbols. This one is its price in buttons, and this one is how long it takes to stitch it to the quill board. There are some very expensive patches that cost up to 10 buttons, other cheaper ones, and there's even one that doesn't have a price because it's free. In the following order, you must choose and grab a patch, move the wooden pawn to the spot where the patch was, pay for the patch, place, stitch the patch, move the time token. Here, the green player has decided to take the first patch, which costs three buttons and requires two hours of work. So he takes the patch, places the pawn in its place, and pays for its price. You can place the patch anywhere on the quilt board. You can rotate or flip the patch any way you want, but it has to be fully placed within the board boundaries and cannot overlap with any other stitched patches. Once the patch is placed, it is considered to be sewn to it and you won't be able to move it. So, choose wisely where you place it. Lastly, look at the amount of hours that working on the patch requires and move your time token forward that number of spaces. In patchwork, the turns are not alternated. The player whose token is farther behind takes a turn, whether the token is here, here, or any previous space, including if it's on top of the other one. For this reason, it's very possible for a player to play several turns in a row buying and placing patches. The other action you can take is resting. Whether it's because you can't afford any of the patches or because it's simply in your best of interest. This is because every time you rest, you gain buttons. What we do is advance a time token to the space right after the time token of our opponent. Not a space less, not a space more. The one right after. It does not matter how far away it is. You earn a button for each space advanced. You could say that you spend the time resting looking for misplaced buttons on the sofa or around the house. If you've paid close attention, on the central time board, there are nine blue buttons. The first one is four spaces away from the starting space, and the rest are all spaced six apart. The buttons are not spaces, they are checkpoints. That is why you must not count them as part of your movement or end on top of them. When a player passes a button checkpoint, we must do the following count. In case you haven't noticed, the patches, apart from the labels with the price and time, 
They also have buttons sewn to them. There are patches with three, two, one, and no buttons. These buttons make your quilt more valuable. Every time the time token passes the button checkpoint, you will collect as many buttons as there are sewn to your quilt board. In this case, the yellow player has none sewn, so in this case, the checkpoint hasn't favored him. In his turn, after buying a patch, the green player passes a checkpoint, and he does earn two buttons. Along the central board, we will also find the five one by one brown patches. These are leather patches, and just like the buttons on the board, they are also checkpoints. In this case, the first player to pass by a leather patch gets to keep it, and must place it immediately on their quilt board. The leather patches are great to fit small spaces left behind on the quilt board. The first player to fill a 7x7 square on their quilt board earns the 7x7 tile. This square cannot have any spaces in it. As a reference, the quilt board is a 9x9 square. The 7x7 tile will add 7 extra points at the end of the game. It cannot be used to buy patches. Once both tokens reach the last space, the scoring takes place. Add all your buttons, then subtract 2 for every space left empty on your quill board. The player with the 7x7 tile adds 7 extra points. It is possible to score in the negatives if there are many empty spaces on the quilt. The player with the high score wins the game. And that was our express tutorial of Patchwork. If you want to know more about the game itself, here are our review and detail tutorial where we explain all the rules in detail. Remember that you can skip the intro by clicking on the time labels. And if you can't see any of the boxes on the screen, in the video description you'll find the links to these videos and any other ones that we publish in the near future. Videos of gameplays, hacks, ambient music. We hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give us a thumbs up and help us out by sharing it with your friends. If it helped you learn how to play, tag us on any photos you upload or let us know in the comments below. Lastly, if you want to be the first to find out about our new uploads, subscribe to the channel and click that bell. Games on board. We do the reading, you do the playing.